welcome to the September edition of my carp fishing season. This unfortunately is going to be the last in the series because believe it or not we've done a whole year of these carp in the seasons. But don't worry because we still have lots of vlogs going on on different waters both here and France and lots of different projects so tune in. So if you haven't subscribed already hit the subscribe button, hit that bell notification icon and you'll never miss another one of these videos again. We are on the shallow lagoon on the St Ives complex again and I got here last night, Mrs B gave me a three day pass so I got here just before dark, it was just about to start to pour down so I managed to get the bivvy up, didn't do any video in, just pinged out three rods because so it was absolutely pouring. So here we are, we woke up in the morning, very very quiet, not a lot happening but I'm going to run you through what we're doing how we're doing it and we've got another 48 hours to go also biscuit a week and I'll be showing you a lovely little bottom bait tiger rig that has caught me lots of fish over the years in the rig clinic but for now I had a little trip over to France on a little adventure on a public lake and this is what happened well welcome this is something very very different isn't it we are, uh, we're in the van, we're on our way, well we're at, we're at the tunnel at the moment, but we are on our way to France. We've got our shopping, we went and got that today, all sorted out, packed all the van up, put all the kit in, that's all sorted, and we're going to mid-France, something a little bit different to our normal vlogs, and just somewhere completely different, public lake, not the safety of the normal like you know pay pay like but uh, yeah something a little bit more adventurous yeah I've always wanted to do it so I thought why not let's go and do it right I'll see you on the other side I finally landed in France full of excitement get into the lake of a new adventure and it just brought it back home and I see this van on fire and you've just got to get enough sleep, enough rest, you know, the lake's not going nowhere is it? Look at this for a sunset on the lake where I'll be fishing tomorrow, I'm camping here tonight, but I'll be putting the rods out tomorrow, look how big this lake is, it's massive. This is only one small part of it. It goes all the way up there. Look, right to the end. It's about this, twice as much again. And you thought the boats were mad on long reach. Check out this mental thing. Look, there's me rods. And look at this going. This is gonna come right in, right into where I'm fishing sometimes. I tell you, it's mental, look. And then you got water, water skier. Mad. Now that's a proper speedboat, that one. Look at that. Proper speedboat. Well, we finally got a bit of quiet and sorted ourselves out. Got all the rods out in this lovely, beautiful place. Now, we have to use back leads, you know, heavy back leads as well, because of the toe and the distance out we're fishing and braid. And also, we have to lock down the back of the rods just so they don't, well, on the takes, you don't lose any. So we got all sorted, everything was out for the day, got the barbecue on, got some food on the go. What a beautiful place it is to chill out and do something. You know, I can't express what an adventure this really was and how we're going to, in the future, do some more of these type of proper vlogs and record it properly and do everything. You know, get the drone out, get everything. This was a little bit of a test. And uh, after about three or four days the of just looking and fishing during the days so we weren't in the night zone it's only in the day zone so we can only fish the days and really at night the inevitable happened after watching and looking and getting the rods out and being persistent and uh yeah this is what happened well we've got a caught one a big old french lake 40 pound and ounces common what a right result this is. I'm gonna show it to you. Glistening in the sunshine, it's be 100 degrees today. Check this common out, it's what we come for. What a proper boat battle. But look at this, a common look. Look at that, big old French common. Look at that, look. Oh, it's yours to go. It's 
so I'm gonna let her go. Look at this. What we come to places like this for, isn't it? Oh, proper adventure. Check this out. Let's put her back. Oh. What an awesome common that was, and I feel privileged to have caught it in such a large lake. And three or four days later, lightning struck again, and I managed to catch another one. Here we go, guys. Check out this public lake carp. 32 pound. What a cracker. Look at that. Built for speed, built for fighting this one. We're gonna get her back. Yes. After catching the last common on my last morning, it was all too soon to pack up and have to boat all my gear across the lake to head off home. But we should be back, so look forward over the next year for some more of these adventures. Okay, welcome back. What an adventure that was to that public lake in France. Almost a thousand acres that lake is. I didn't really film a lot of it. I just sort of glossed over it. it the logistics of it was I really couldn't do it anyway because of moving the gear in the boat and all that. But we've upgraded all our gear. We've got a bigger boat. Better this, better that, so we shall be going soon. So probably the next video you see off this one will be another French adventure, but filmed properly this time. Hopefully with a drone and everything else, so it'll be a little bit more context to it. Hopefully we'll catch a few more like we did at that trip. What some lovely fish out there, and it's public fishing. Okay, back to this session on the shallows. It's September, so what tactics, how am I gonna approach this session in regard to how I approach September? So, first thing, September, October, November, those times of the year, I always tend to put more boilie in my mix, in my spot mix, or I might just go full on boilie. Now for my summer fishing, I'm open fishing, triple X from CC Moore, lots of green lip mussel in there, proper fish meal, old school fish meal. That is the base of all my fishing throughout the summer and the autumn months. I had a little bit of hemp, a few tigers, uh, you know, half a can of corn into my spod mix, but the main basis of it would be 15 mil, 18 mil, chopped triple X, 10 mil triple X, dumbbell triple X, you know, use the Ridge Monkey Crusher and crush up a load of the boilie so you've got little chops and bits and pieces and just lots of carpet feed out there of the boilie, giving off all that attraction. That's gonna be what we're gonna be feeding. I've just flicked out the three rods into the areas I was fishing last night Flicked them out and I found a little bit better, a little bit cleaner spot. Still some weed out there. So we'll be fishing on the pattern oyster with the bead up quite high. We'll be fishing hinge stiffies on all three. Two on the white, normal special plus ones, which has done me so well over the last couple of years. They just really are, especially the pink and the white ones. And on the middle rod, I shall have a match the hatch triple x cork ball pop-up fishing over that feed of the triple x all the bits and pieces out there so i found my three spots clipped them up i've wrapped them up ready because i've got two nights now in here i've honed it in on the three little spots i want to do i've put all those three rods out on the spots lovely got the line down as much as cams there's still quite a bit of weed out there i'm going to put 10 spots of that mix over each rod it's a lot but you know september october time the fish are on the hunt for those boilies for that feed they're starting to get munched up ready for the winter which is in a three months time okay so that's a lot to take in but that's how I'm going to fish it and I may even leave the rods out there for 48 hours because we've got a bit of wind coming in unless I get a bite of course I may just leave them out there because what's the point of changing the spots unless I see fish elsewhere and then I move what's the point of redoing them putting more bait on top if the situation hasn't really changed the spots are good the baits are good the pop-up is going to stay up for at least three days we're only going to be out there for two days and you know there's no point putting more bait on spots that I reckon may not have been fed so we'll see how it goes but that is how we're going to approach it that's what we've done it's time to relax now get a cup of tea on get the barbecue on get some dinner on watch look and listen throughout the evening and hopefully we have one to show you in the morning
Well, I've got one to show you. Just shows you this time of year, they love their boilies, mate. They just love them. Just before it starts to get cold, October, November, September time, they love their boilies. Right, 33 pound four ounce, an old Riley, old crusty old Cambridgeshire carp from St. Ives. Let's have a look at her. Look at this, people scattered in here on there. Look at that, you don't find many of these anymore. An old history fish, beautiful, look at that. Loving its boilies this time of year. 33 pound four, and uh, I'm gonna get her back and see if we can catch another one. So we've got one more night left, and we've got this afternoon. What a way to start. Welcome to the September Biscuit of the Week. And celebrating that fish, well, I've got something special, very special to show you. I've made myself a nice brew, a nice cup of rosy. Oh, lovely, as a celebrating drink for that awesome fish. And we've got, look, at, I'm, not, I'm not even gonna say, look, I'm not even gonna say, just check those out. Whisper, Cadbury's Whisper Biscuit. I mean, they be like me, but Whisper is one of my favourite chocolate bars. Can't you see? I eat quite a lot of Whispers, not chocolate. Pound in Morrison's. How many did you get in there? Let's have another. Let's have a look. I'm looking forward to these ones. Thank you to all the guys that have told me about these. You've got two, four, six, eight for a pound. And of course, they're art attack material. They're going to be, aren't they? But if they're anything like the chocolate bar, the Whisper chocolate bar, these are going to be one of my favourites. So let's have a little look at them. Look. Proper chocolatey, look at that there, look, proper chocolatey. Full of chocolate, all the way over, cabbage chocolate all over, which is a good start. Yeah, biscuity bottom, with a whisper topping. Biscuity around here, and then a whisper topping on the top. Currently milk chocolate. Yeah, I'm liking them. Mmm, I'm liking them, definitely. Mmm. These are very Moorish, because they're from Cadbury's, you know they're gonna be a bit special, and they are not disappointed. Mm. Mm. Oh my God, yep, they're pretty damn good. But, they can be really good, and taste good like they do. But what's the dunk ability? Dunk ability's the one. Right, dunked him. Oh, bloody hell. Oh, mate. Stood up to the Dunker Billy, 10 out of 10 with Dunker Billy, and that top Cadbury's chocolate melts, oh my god, leaving the whisper in its entirety and the biscuit underneath. See what? They are one of my favourite biscuits of the week. Check them out, guys. One pound at Morrison's. I'm sure other retailers sell them. You eight for a pound. Cadbury's Whisper Biscuits, Bubbly Milk Chocolate Biscuits. That is one of my favorite and September's Biscuit of the Week. Welcome back, hope you enjoyed that Biscuit of the Week. Rather special one, that one. Okay, it's late afternoon. I've left it as long as possible, those other rods out there in case I may have got another bite, but the wind's got up. It's really starting to pick up this afternoon, like I said it was gonna. It looks very carpy, but it looks very windy, and there is lots and lots of weed floating around and everything else, so I'm probably gonna give it about another hour or so. It's about three hours before it gets dark. I'm probably gonna give it another hour, hour and a half. Hopefully that wind had died down just before dark and all the weed would have moved around the way it should have done, but it's looking like a different swim now with the weed where it's moved about with that wind. But it's looking very carpy, not as sunny and hot as it was yesterday. And there's an overcast cloud and it's just looking spot on for another bite. But I won't be greedy, that's for certain. So plan of attack is, I'm gonna read through all the three rods out there. 
on the same spots. I'm going to stick with the two on the Northern Special Whites plus ones, one on the Max the Hatch Triple X, what we are feeding in the spod mix, boily wise. Okay, and I'm going to put five spods on the two rods where I didn't get a bite, the right hand rod where I did get a bite on the Northern Special Plus one on the hinge stiffy, they're all on hinge stiffies. I'll put another 10 spods on that because obviously that one had, that was the one I got the bite on. That's the one where I want to put the same amount of bait on again, just for another night. So I'm going to do that, I'm going to give it another hour, hour and a half, like I said, wait till this wind's died down a bit and that weed has moved where it's got to move to, and then I'm going to redo the rods. Okay, that's me, I'm going to get sorted, I'm going to get the rods sorted in a while, and then we will look forward to a nice relaxed for evening, dinner, cups of tea, biscuits, whatever, and you never know, even though I'm not greedy, we may have one to show you in the morning, if not, before we go, I'll be showing you that little tiger nut bottom bait rig, which is a surefire winner for any time of the year. Sun's up, still windy. Windy miller today, isn't it? Look, look at that. A little bit windy out there. But all the play for, still got the rest of the day to go. Very quiet night last night, but phew, it was nice to get a little bit of sleep. And I caught up on quite a bit of sleep. The sun's up, look, it's really bright. Look at that out there, look. Can you see it up there? Really bright this morning. It's gonna be, um, gonna be a beautiful day as usual. But still looking good for a bite this morning. Put those on because the sun's glaring down at me. Still looking good for a bite, but I won't be too disappointed if we don't have any more. Because we've had an absolute cracking old warrior, crusty old thing that was, wasn't it? Hey, eh? God, well made up with that anyway. But my kettle's on, and we first a brew of the day, and then we'll go through this little tiger nut bottom bait rig, which has been so successful for me over the years, and I'm sure. When you tie it up and use it, you'll catch a few on it as well. See you in a minute. Welcome to this month's rig clinic. And as promised, I'm going to show you how to tie my tiger nut bottom bait rig. It's a really simple rig to tie. Very effective. All seasons of the year, not just the summer and the spring, when you think tiger nuts are going to be, you know, the one to use, but all season long. I've caught fish on this rig and on tiger nuts in the winter time as well. Again, as usual with all these type of videos, don't worry about stopping and starting it and looking at the components, because I'll list all the components down in the description of the video, or if you're watching this on IGTV, in the description down below. And you can always message me, direct message me on Instagram, and I will send you the list of the components used to tie this awesome rig. So, what do we want to do? First of all, you want to get your desired hook link. I use a coated braided hook link. I use one which is in tungsten infused, so I don't have to use putty at the end of it to pin it all down. There's two types you can use as well. You can use a stiff one or a soft one, depending on the type of the bottom you're fishing over. The harder the bottom, the stiffer the hook link I like to use. The softer the bottom, the softer the hook link I, I like to use. As a rule of thumb with all my rigs, but particularly with this rig, where I usually just be putting it in the edge, it's a great little stalking rig. First step is to cut off about 12 to 14 inches of your chosen hook link. Get a stripper tool, strip off about five to six inches and tie a small loop in the end. Next thing is to take a small rig ring, thread that down the length of your hook link and tie that to the strip back section just below the loop that we tied. Take into consideration the size of your hook bait because whether you want to fish it tight to the back of the ring or you want to have some separation between the ring and the tiger nut hook bait, which I favor, I like to have, I like to use probably about an inch to give the fish lots of room to hang itself and that separation between hook bait and hook really does seem to work. 
Although I've caught them tight against that ring as well. Next thing we want to choose our hook. Now I particularly like a wide gape, beak point type. of. It lends itself perfectly to this presentation. A reason why I use the beak point hooks, the interned points, is that if you're fishing on the bottom as you are with this type of rig, is they're not going to blunt as easy. Because these hooks are so sharp, it only takes a straight point to get a bit of rock and you're going to burr over the top of that hook point. If you're using a beak point type of pattern, the likelihood of that point burring over is a lot less. All we need to do now is to tie an easy knotless knot, three or four turns, five, six turns, whatever you want to do, as long as you're leaving a half to an inch of the strip back coated braid to give it lots of movement. Next thing we want to do, next step, is to cut off a small piece of small shrink tube, so which we're going to fit over the eye of the hook. Cut that off, thread that down, push that on so it's only just over the eye of the hook. We don't want a great big bit of shrink tubing because it negates the, the point to the eye of the hook and you've got less chance of hooking that fish. I like to use a small tiny little piece which just goes over the eye so you still keep that wideness of that beak point hook there. You have a lot more chance of hooking the fish. So we've threaded that down. We'll leave that to the very end to, to steam that into place. Next thing we want to do is use an, a nice tungsten anti-tangle sleeve, thread that down, tie a small loop in the end of your hook link. The size, whatever size you want the hook link, but I tend to find six to eight inches long is perfect for this, especially if you're fishing in the edge, you're using this rig to stalk, or you can cast this rig out, it's not a problem. Tie your loop and then butt your tungsten anti-tangle sleeve up to the knot ready we put it onto our quick change swivel next thing we want to do is to mount our hook bait which is the tiger nut this rig works best when you're using a level of buoyancy in your hook bait if you can imagine you're putting out the feed of your tigers and your boilers and they're going around and sucking it in and then they come across your hook bait they suck it in it goes in a lot quicker but you've got all that buoyancy in there you don't want it buoy so buoyant so it's sticking right up in the air you want it so it just slowly sinks down lovely like that and your actual tiger nut sitting up above the hook so when it sucks it in it's going to go further back in the throw and you have more chance of hooking that fish so get your tiger nut, use a little six mil drill, drill it out nice and neat, take your time so not to split the tiger nut and then put a small piece of six mil cork insert into that, cut it off all nice and flush it looks like this and then what we do is we thread that onto our loop that we made earlier bed it all nice and down put a little stop at the end pull it all nice and tight there you go that's your tiger nut hook bait mounted onto this awesome rig last thing as i was mentioned what we got to do is we got to fire up the kettle get the steam going be careful with your fingers and mold that little bit of shrink tube just so it gives that kick factor that's about it you don't need to use any putty because you're using a tungsten hook link and a tungsten anti-tangle sleeve on the end. There you go, that is your Tiger Nut bottom bait rig as used by myself. Give it a go, tie it up and let me know how you get on with it and good luck. Well, I hope you like that Tiger Nut bottom bait rig. It really is an awesome little rig. If you, As I said in the video, if you need a list of components or any help with tying it, please just DM me on my Instagram page and I will be able to help you out with the list or any tips on how to tie it or whatever to do with a rig. Just send me a message. Well, that looks like that's more or less about it. We've got about an hour before I need to wrap up and everything. At least it's not too far to go because the old van's only there. So, and there's no walk of shame this week, this month, should I say, because we've caught an absolute clonking, wrinkly old warrior of a St. Ives carp, and I'm more than made up to be going home. That drive, that long drive will be a lot more easier. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this one, and tune in for the next one. Thanks for watching, and see you for the next vlog.